Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Severe weather possible this evening. We've got the latest details coming up. A deep dive into those bank failures last month coming out today. I'm Lindsay Watts in Washington. Coming up, I'll have the latest on the new report by regulators. And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. Just a few moments ago, Justin Horn telling us the fog is starting to set in. We're going to check in with him in just a few moments. What does Battle of Flowers look like today? Could we see bad weather tonight? Good morning. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Yes, good morning. It is the 28th on this Friday in April. Thanks it is for joining a fiesta us. Friday, as you can tell right here. Fiesta and uh, Friday. Battle of Flowers. <laughs> Obviously, we're going to see Mark, Stephanie, the whole team throughout the morning. But we're joining you right now. And honestly, Justin Horn scared me a little bit this morning. We have our uh, our morning call. Yep. And Justin, you threw out some serious words in regards to the weather. Well, there is a risk for severe weather tonight. It's it's not, uh, we don't have to get too, too worried about it, but we do need to be prepared this evening. There's a time frame around 6 to 9 p.m. that I want to watch pretty closely because we have the risk for storms and maybe some hail involved too. So if you have plans to be out and about tonight, know that that is a possibility. Let's first start with what's going on right now. Some fog starting to set in. I can see visibility starting to come down just a little bit. Not a surprise. Moisture starting to surge back in, and that typically gives us some fog and low clouds. 61, mostly cloudy at the airport. Notice the dew point is on its way back up at 58. We've got calm winds. So that's a pretty good setup for some patchy fog this morning. Here's the forecast as you head out to Battle of Flowers this morning. We'll call it uh, partly to mostly cloudy with some patchy fog. I'd say through about 9 o'clock. Once the parade gets started, we should be looking at sunny skies in really nice weather. 72 at 10 o'clock. Noontime, we're up to 80. So that time frame where we have our Battle of Flowers in the 70s. Uh, good viewing weather, no doubt about it. But as we head into tonight, that's when things begin to change a little bit. We start to add in rain chances uh, just after dinner time. And the Storm Prediction Center has raised our risk of severe weather now to uh, numerous on a scale of one to five, about a three. So it is elevated. And again, I think the main threat tonight is going to be some hail. We're going to take a deeper investigation into this forecast and uh, talk about Flambeau to the forecast for that coming up in just a little bit, guys. Thank you for that update, Justin. This morning, hundreds of thousands of fentanyl doses are off the streets. Governor Abbott says Texas DPS agents seized 507,000 lethal doses in Austin. Agents also found other drugs, guns, ammunition, and stolen vehicles. Agents also arrested two people, and now they're facing federal charges. New reports out later today will look at why two regional banks failed just last month. That caused people to rush to get their money and prompting financial fears across the globe. As ABC's Lindsay Watts explains, that report by the Federal Reserve and the FDIC will also propose ways to prevent this from happening again. What led up to the banking implosion that put markets on edge and rattled the global financial system? Two reports out today will shed light on the failures last month of Silicon Valley and signature banks. The Federal Reserve and FDIC releasing dual post-mortem reports. One big question, what did the Fed know and when? Before Congress, the Fed's supervisory chair was asked directly whether he believed the Fed dropped the ball. Fundamentally, the bank failed because its management failed to appropriately address clear interest rate risk and clear liquidity risk. This morning, Reuters is reporting that regulators were worried before the March crisis that the FDIC warned late last year large portions of regional bank deposit balances were uninsured, noting the potential for impacts on other banks. The reports out today are also expected to address whether regional banks should once again undergo stress tests like the nation's largest banks. Those rules were rolled back under the Trump administration. We need better laws here in Congress. There was a clear supervisory failure. Our regulators were simply asleep at the wheel. Right now, another regional bank is on the brink. Shares of First Republic Bank plummeted nearly 50 percent Tuesday. In all, shares have fallen almost 90 percent since the beginning of the year. The White House says it's continuing to monitor the situation. The FDIC will issue another report on Monday about deposit insurance. Currently, the feds insure deposits up to $250,000, though all deposits were insured when those two banks failed. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington.
And speaking of finances, the United States reached its $31.4 trillion spending limit back on January 19th. And that's really when the battle in the Beltway began. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's 320-page Limit, Save, and Grow Act, which actually passed through the House, it raises the debt limit, but it trims the budget. However, President Joe Biden and most Democratic lawmakers, they're not interested in looking at it. If any agreement on the debt ceiling is not reached by the summer, officials say treasuries could tank, interest rates could spike, the dollar could sink, and global economies could reel. Now, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the debt ceiling deadline could come as soon as this June. Anheuser-Busch is making leadership changes in the wake of the controversy over its partnership with a transgender social media influencer. A company spokesperson says two of the executives from the Bud Light marketing team are taking leaves of absence. The personal decisions follows the company's collaboration with Dylan Mulvaney. On two Instagram posts this month, the post immediately drew right-wing backlash with many calling for a boycott. The company has reportedly experienced a drop in butt light sales in the wake of the backlash. And the latest at the border, the Biden administration, they're preparing for a migrant surge in the next coming weeks. Because remember, the coronavirus public health emergency officially ends. That's scheduled to end on May 11th. It'll also mean the end of Title 42. Now, we've explained Title 42 before, but just in case you need a refresher, the COVID era rule, it allowed border authorities to quickly expel certain migrants. Now, a senior customs and border protection official, they estimate that several thousand migrants are waiting in North Mexico, waiting to cross the border into the United States. The Biden administration says they're already in the process of setting up regional processing centers for migrants to apply to the United States. Now, the goal is to provide legal pathways for migrants to enter our country while imposing consequences for those who come in illegally. The Battle of the Flowers Parade kicks off this morning. Woo! You can join our watch party along the parade route. Our live coverage starts at 6 a.m. sharp. Scan this QR code right here on your screen to buy tickets, which come with two tacos, assigned seats, and yes, bathrooms, because, you know, that's what we'll need next. Yeah, plus, you like get to hours. hang out. <laughs> plus, you get to hang out with the KSAT crew. And speaking of the KSAT crew, we're going to be checking in with them live throughout the morning. And then... Alyssa convinced me. I think after the show, we'll go for a couple hours. You know, you know, know, throw a couple of flowers, you know, have some fun. Yeah, we'll have a good time. <laughs> All right, time now, though, 437. It's weird even saying it that early. Uh, about 63 <laughs> degrees out. Up next, a look at who went where oh. and last night's NFL draft for the Texans and the Cowboys. Stay with us. Of course. Let's take a live look out at the roadways right now. All right, it is still extremely early. We know. A lot of people have off work today, some people have off school, so we know not too many people on the roadways. There's a few there, 281, 410. If anything does pop up, we will keep you posted. Wow, and you know, just looking at Trans Guy right now, look over the city, it's so clear right now, but let's just give it a couple of hours. It's gonna be looking very different. You wanna stick with us to get your most up-to-date traffic notifications. We'll be back. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Ooh, so if you're up with us right now, odds are you didn't watch the NFL draft. And it was an exciting one to say the least. So the second overall pick, this guy, C.J. Stroud, Ohio State, now a Texan. And he's not the only Texan in the first three picks. So during the last few days leading up to the draft, really wasn't known what the Texans were planning to do. There was a lot of talk thinking they were going to be passing on a quarterback, they'd go with the defender instead. So whatever was going on, C.J. Stroud, he is now the face of the Texans franchise. We want to bring wins on wins on wins, and we ain't going to be perfect. I think that's something that I want to talk about, just not being perfect, just being ourselves, man. And really, if, if that's what it is, like, I don't think there's really no limit on what me and Will can do. Like, I ain't going to put no limit on what we can do our rookie season. Uh, we turn this whole thing around. So, uh, yeah, I don't really know, man. I, I really feel like uh, there's a really spe special feeling as I go to Houston. So, remember when I said that they were looking at defenders? Well, immediately after drafting second, the Texans shook up the draft, traded up to third overall, and they picked edge rusher Will Anderson Jr., who CJ just referenced there, University of Alabama. He earned the nickname the Terminator during his sophomore season, SEC Defender of the Year in back-to-back -back seasons, and he was high on the Texans draft board. They moved up to get the Terminator. So it'll be exciting, and hopefully this will get as CJ said so eloquently, wins on wins on wins for the Texans. Speaking of our other Texas team, with the 26th overall pick, the Dallas Cowboys drafting defensive tackle Mozzie Smith from University of Michigan. 
All right. Let's there you go. go. Let's go green, though. But. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> All right, I believe that Dallas was planning to draft tight end Dalton Kincaid, but the Bills traded picks with the Jags, getting Kincaid at 25, one spot ahead of the Cowboys. Back in October of 2022, Smith was actually stopped by police for speeding, arrested for possessing a concealed weapon without a valid license to carry one. He pled guilty to a misdemeanor. He was sentenced to probation. And per Bleacher Report, Micah Parsons, who actually watched a little bit during the draft, he texted the Dallas D.C. Dan Quinn asking to draft Smith, and clearly, Micah got his wish. All right. Time to play ball. The Rangers hosting the Yankees in Arlington yesterday. Top of the second. Yankees putting three on the board. Capped off. His base is loaded. RBI single from shortstop. And that was enough to, well, get him in. The Yankees going to win 4-2. to two. Handon Texans, fourth straight loss. And speaking of baseball, we got the Missions, a.k.a. the Flying Chanclas, hosting the Naturals last night. Bottom two, Missions up. When, ooh, here we go. Solo shot to left field. Easy souvenir for a fan standing to the ball. Chanclas win it by a huge margin. Five to one. And going back to NFL news, I have a friend, big Ravens fan, Dean AJ from St. Mary's Law. Lamar Jackson, now the highest paid NFL player right. in the league ever. And uh, Dean AJ said, it's Lamarvelous. Wow. I, like oh, I love that. I yeah. love that. Play on words. Max will get it every time you are. Oh, I'm <laughs> trying. All right. Time now. 444, 63 degrees out. Up next, Ed Sheeran is back on the witness stand at his copyright infringement trial while he's accused of copying one of his most famous songs. Ed Sheeran was back on the stand in his copyright infringement trial, and he played some chords on his guitar as part of his testimony. ABC's Aaron Kotarski has the details in today's GMA's First Look. I'm thinking about in this morning's GMA First Look, Ed Sheeran back on the witness stand at his copyright infringement trial. The pop star brought his guitar, briefly playing the chord progression he's accused of copying for his Grammy-winning song, Thinking Out Loud. Darling, I will be loving you till we're 70. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. At the trial, Let's Get It On was called the perfect song for that moment. But Sheeran testified he wrote his song after a grandparent died as a testament to love at an advanced age. And he said he wrote it in a day. Hardly time to think about copying a common chord progression. We'll be live from the courthouse coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Aaron Katursky, ABC News, New York. All right, well, back here at home, let's take a live look out at the roadways right now. Not too many people. Actually, you know what? I say that, but there are a few people on the roads. Maybe they're getting ready for Battle of Flowers, Justin. And I know <laughs> the big question today is, will the weather hold up for the full parade? It will. Absolutely will. I mean, it's going to be great this morning. Absolutely we really will. Draw it up any better. The one concern I have is, of course, this evening, because there will still be a lot of people out and about. There's fiesta events this evening, too. So we got to be really careful here with this window of severe weather. But yes, Battle of Flowers looks Good. It's nice out there right now. In fact, we're down to 61 at the airport. Dew point is at 58, but what you'll notice is that temperature and dew point are getting close. And whenever that happens, that's a sure sign of fog. So I think we're going to see at least a little bit of that this morning with calm winds. It, it's a pretty good setup. Uh, as we look at dew points, they're on their way back up. Yesterday was so nice. The air dried out some, uh, but now these dew points are starting to sneak back up into the 60s, and that puts us in the muggy territory. You'll feel it today. And for Battle of the Flowers, uh, Battle of Flowers, it'll feel a little bit humid out there. As far as visibility is concerned, we're still okay right now, but you can just kind of see it out there. It's starting to get a little more hazy. And as you get down towards Pleasanton, visibility now down to zero. So this fog is kind of working its way up to the north and west. And I do think we'll see a little bit here in San Antonio. It doesn't last all that long. Mid-morning, probably gone, along with any sort of cloud cover that we get this morning. So with that in mind, Battle of Flowers, Temperatures probably start off in the 60s when the parade begins, and then we jump into the 70s. Honestly, that's about as good as we could ask for here around San Antonio this time of year. Uh, 3 o'clock, it's still sunny. We're at 88. It's going to be a warm afternoon, warm and humid. And then as we get into this evening, that's when we have to worry about that risk of severe storms. Rain chances, I'd say, between 
6 to 9 o'clock, 60 to 70 percent. And this is where we could see some of those uh, severe storms. Here's the setup. We've got humidity starting to come back in. Here is our storm system. Frontal boundary starting to come into the Texas Panhandle. As we get into the afternoon, this pushes east and it's along this boundary. This is 4 o'clock where we're going to start to see storms. Uh, we'll use the term unzip. You'll see the storms start and then you'll just see them light up along this front and that will push uh, off to the south and east. So as we look at the severe weather risk today, we have been included in the numerous category here. So on a scale of one to five, about a three. That's an elevated risk for us. And as we look closer here at San Antonio and our surrounding areas, most of us, most of us are in the numerous zone, uh, others in the scattered, but everyone has a risk to see that severe weather. So let's walk you through the forecast here. This is four o'clock, not much there maybe an isolated storm or two. So this is when things get started. By five o'clock, here we go. We're starting to see those storms rapidly explode along that front. And then by six o'clock, we've got a broken line of likely severe storms just to the north and west of San Antonio. By seven o'clock, starting to move in. Very strong winds, hail, possibility as these storms move through. And then by eight, nine o'clock, they're quickly racing off to the south and east. And I think our Threat probably ends pretty quickly there. By 10 o'clock, the threat's probably closer to the Texas coast. We still could get a few showers behind this, but nothing that'll be severe. Uh, maybe a few showers around two, three o'clock in the morning. And then we clear out rapidly Saturday morning. The thing we have to worry about at this point is going to be the gusty winds. Uh, we'll see northwesterly winds gusting 35, maybe 40 miles per hour. So to recap the timing, four to six o'clock in the Hill Country, six to nine San Antonio and along Highway 90 and I-10. If you're along the coast, 9 p.m. to midnight tonight. Storm threats, hail, the biggest threat, but we're also going to watch very closely for some strong wind gusts right along that line. So these are the two things we'll be watching tonight. I mentioned the winds, gusts close to 40 by Saturday morning. That's the other side to this. Now, the good news is that by Fiesta Flambeau, winds will have died down, and it will be almost chilly by the parades in tomorrow night. We could be in the 50s. I'd say maybe a light jacket may not be a bad idea if you're heading out there tomorrow night. 75 for high tomorrow, 84 on Sunday. We're back in the 80s next week with more humidity. We'll have a, a close eye on everything that occurs tonight. And of course, we'll, uh, we'll be here to let you know if anything does pop up. In case that weather app is great to have, we'll always be able to go live on the app uh, once things flare up. It is crazy how it's basically perfect for the parade and then right afterwards. We really thread the needle this year. It's uh, pretty impressive uh, the way it's working out. Uh, that's just, yeah, we'll take it. That's just the way it goes. Don't want to jinx it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We'll take it. Thanks, yeah. that's yes. the... Right now your time is 452 and it's 63 degrees outside. All right, for one week only to celebrate the 40th anniversary, of the 1983 Star Wars classic Return of the Jedi, and this is controversial, it's actually my favorite. It is returning to theaters. Up next, we hear from Lando himself, Billy D. Williams about the re-release and how he got his iconic role. I blew up the the uh, the uh, Death Star, which was a big deal. <laughs> he sure did, and it sure was. Yeah. <laughs> Billy D. Williams says he wanted to make his character, Lando Calrissian, a little larger than life. The one-time smuggler and schemer would go on to become a leader in the fight against the Empire. I became a general. How I became a general, I still don't know to this day. <laughs> I don't know how I went from Lando Calrissian, who was like uh, running Vegas, to a general. <laughs> I'll take good care of her. She, she won't get a scratch. William says this role was handed to him, but it came after he'd proven himself. There was the TV movie Brian's Song in 1971. He starred opposite Diana Ross the next year in Lady Sings the Blues, and again a few years later, this time in Mahogany. I was lovely and charming and, and all that kind of stuff, and, uh, and I had a kind of a reputation and a kind of uh, presence. And uh, that's what they wanted, and that's what they got. <laughs> Would you get going, you pirate? Good luck. You too. 
Williams has an autobiography on the way he's currently calling, well, what have we here? Portraits of my life. It's a line he borrowed from Star Wars. He says it's a fun and interesting book. I led a uh, relatively uh, fascinating uh, life. I'm sure. In Los Angeles, George Pinocchio for ABC News. Yeah, I'd say so. Yes, I agree too. Yeah. Yes. You're in a Star Wars movie, that's a pretty fascinating life. Yes, I can see that. I can see that. Time now, 457, 63 degrees. Just ahead on GMSA, why a man accused of killing his 11-month-old daughter may have to stay in the Bear County Jail while he awaits trial. All right, plus, we're looking ahead. The race for the White House in 2024, it's just getting started. Just ahead, which of Biden's challengers saying he may not live long enough to finish a second term. And taking a look at Trans Guy right now, it looks like there's a little incident right there at Loop 410 in Broadway. We have Stephen Cavazos in the house. He's going to get in contact with Trans Guy and break down what's going on out there. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Great weather for Battle of Flowers, but severe weather works its way into the area tonight. We'll time it out for you. Coming up. President Biden and Vice President Harris host a virtual campaign strategy call just ahead why former President Trump is slamming Biden's record on crime and even his campaign rollout video. And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. This is beautiful from this perspective. Starting the day off 66 degrees. Justin told us it could be picture perfect for the parade, but what comes after that? Getting me a little nervous. We're going to check it with him and Stephen Cavazos in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. Happy Fiesta Friday. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. It is April the 28th. It is, and I got to say, today, Justin, so many people watching the weather, wondering to know, you know what's it going to look out there for the parade. Yeah, timing is all important today, and I will tell you, Battle of Flowers, will be fantastic. Most of the day, in fact, will be really nice. It's this evening between, I'd say, 4 and 10 o'clock for our area that we're going to be watching very, very closely. So let's first start with what's going on outside. Uh, we're noticing the low clouds are starting to work in. There's a little bit of fog out there, too. It looks like visibility is trying to come down some, some here in San Antonio, but so far, uh, no big issues here. Uh, 67 degrees, dew point is at 64. That number is actually on the rise. So is this number. So we're just seeing more moisture really come back into play here. Southerly winds at about eight miles per hour. And if you go outside, you'll you'll feel the humidity very different from yesterday. Visibility coming down just a little bit at Port SA and Randolph. Seguin, you're starting to see some fog down to two and three quarter miles there. Uh, Pleasanton about half a mile is close to zero just a little bit earlier. So we know the fog starting to work its way in from the south and east. Be prepared for at least a couple of hours of that this morning. Mostly cloudy skies, a patchy fog. I'd say through about eight, nine o'clock. Of course, parade gets started right around that time, and I think skies will clear. It'll be really nice. Temperatures in the 70s for most of Battle of Flowers, maybe creeping up into the 80s right there at the end. And we'll jump into the upper 80s by this afternoon. 88 degrees, 89 perhaps at four o'clock. But it's right around that time when we start to add in the chance for isolated thunderstorms and that chance picks up significantly by five, six, seven o'clock. That's when I think we're going to see some severe weather and it's a pretty good bet that we're going to see some of that this afternoon and into this evening. So the Storm Prediction Center has us in the risk for numerous severe storms on a scale of one to five, about a three. And that risk is fairly elevated for us. So that's why we have to be very careful here. The main threats hail and gusty winds tonight. We're going to time it all out for you. Take a look at some of the computer models and show you what we're thinking coming up here in just a few minutes. But we've got some issues on the roadway, so we got to check in with Stephen now and see what's yeah. going on there. So. Uh, you know, Justin, it's been a pretty busy morning out there already, but let's get a look here at 410 at Broadway. I'm going to first start off with a wide look at that shot there. Uh, in fact, we are uh, Katrina Weber has been driving through the scene and she just sent a note uh, her along with photographer Santiago uh, telling us that this crash initially took place in the eastbound lanes of 410 just past Nacogdoches. This uh, appears to be on an elevated section of the highway, but unfortunately, due to a second crash on the Axis Road, Katrina and her photographer had to uh, drive up onto that highway to just get a look at the situation out there. It does appear that a tow truck may be on the scene, and right now we're not sure about the extent of any injuries. As always, we hope everyone is doing okay, but uh, right now it's not clear how long we're going to see this closure in place. You can see right now traffic from this shot at Transguide is being forced to, to exit early, so we'll take a look. We'll call Transguide in just 
just a moment, but let's take a look at the map first. 410 eastbound is where it's been pinpointed. You could see a little bit of that orange and red that's been building up on our map. It stayed pretty consistent for the last 10 to 15 minutes or so, but we're going to watch it closely throughout the morning. While we're at it, let's get a wide look at the metropolitan area at 504. We did have a pretty serious incident along I-35 southbound near Brooklyn Avenue that shut down the lower level. That has since reopened, uh, but right now nothing has been confirmed in terms of injuries or exactly what that incident was, but we know that that has cleared out, so drivers really won't see much of a delay there. But into some travel times, no delays here either. That journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound should be about 25 minutes at this point. 281 southbound heading in from Bolverde. No need to hurry there. 27 minutes is what you can expect. And it's about a 26 minute drive time along I-35 southbound from New Brothels. This is not really something we're concerned about, but we're going to have to keep a very close eye here at 410 at Broadway. Again, first responders responding to a major crash out in the area. We'll get some information and find out exactly how long this is going to take place. I have those updates coming up a little bit later on. Max. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police tell us a man is in the hospital after being shot late last night after getting into a fight with four other people. So take a look. This is what we know right now. This unfolded just before 10 p.m. This is an apartment complex in the 3300 block of Roselawn. It's near Kennedy Park on the southwest side. Police tell us that victim was shot in the shoulder. SAPD tells us right now, after right after the shooting, the suspects jumped into a vehicle. They drove off. The victim ran to another apartment complex. Luckily, he got help. He was taken to the hospital. We are still waiting to learn if any arrests have been made, and we're still waiting to learn how this victim is doing this morning. A man accused of killing his 11-month-old daughter may have to stay in jail while he awaits trial. Stephen Clare is charged with capital murder and the death of a child. The Bear County DA's office has now filed a motion to deny bail for him. The move comes as other charges against Clare were upgraded. Bear County criminal DA Joe Gonzalez released a statement saying in part, quote, a capital offense is the most serious crime one can commit. Mr. Clear should not be walking freely around our community after what he has been accused of doing. Our community values its children, children, end quote. Police arrested Claire after the shooting on April 10th at a home on Robin Hood Place on the north side. The child's mother and two-year-old sister were injured. They were recently released from the hospital. You can read more about this story right now over on KSAT.com. Not closure, but accountability. That's according to the family of 39-year-old Jared Papin. Now, Papin was brutally murdered nearly a year ago at his Stone Oak apartment complex. So last night, San Antonio police finally making an arrest in this case. Like we said, nearly a year later, 27 year old Malik Pryor is now in custody. According to the arrest affidavit, Papin and Pryor were neighbors at this apartment complex. This is the 1200 block of Agora Palms Drive. The two were known to have heated arguments and they're said to had one that day of Papin's death. Now the affidavit adds it believes that Pryor forced Papin into his apartment with a gun, then used the gun to cause blunt force trauma. It says an electrical cord also used during the killing. We've also been going through a year of pain. And last night when I've got the news, I didn't even realize how much I had been holding inside of me in grief and fear that this animal is still on the loose. Right now, Pryor is accused of murder, first degree felony. He's being held at the Bear County Jail on a $150,000 bond. Well, 2024 is not too far away, and there's already a lot of tough new talk in the race for who's going to be the next president. Absolutely. The insults are already flying, and one long-shot Democrat is telling us why he thinks he can beat President Biden. Meanwhile, as ABC's Andrea Fuji E reports, at least one contender thinks President Biden is just too old to run again. It's still very early in the campaign season, but last night, President Biden and Vice President Harris held a virtual campaign strategy call, pinpointing guns and abortion as two issues they'll be emphasizing going forward. This is about our freedoms. MAGA Republicans are trying to take us backwards. Former President Trump was in New Hampshire addressing his many legal troubles. I fly over a state that happens to be Democrat run. They send me a subpoena to go before a grand jury. These people are sick. They're weaponizing that stuff. Trump slamming Biden's record on crime and the border and mocking the campaign video Biden released this week. Prepackaged video that took supposedly seven takes to get it right, if right is what you want to call it. 
Republican candidate Nikki Haley also questioning Biden's competence, suggesting Biden, who's now 80, may not live long enough to finish a second term. If you vote for Joe Biden, you really are counting on a President Harris because the idea that he would make it until 86 years old is not... Um, is not something that I think is likely. Meanwhile, another Democrat in the race, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., sat down with ABC's Lindsey Davis, speaking about his background in environmental law and why he thinks he can take on Biden. I think I know more about how to fix regulatory agencies than any other politician in this country because I've spent 40 years suing him. Kennedy, known for his anti-vaccine rhetoric, is a long shot. Author Marianne Williamson is also running for the Democratic nomination. As for Republicans, there are now five candidates, not including Florida Governor Ron DeSantis or former Vice President Mike Pence. They're expected to make their decisions by summer. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. All right, back here at home today is a huge day. Battle of Flowers, most city of San Antonio offices closed today for Fiesta San Jacinto Day. And of course, what we're going to be covering throughout the morning, we just saw Mark walk through the newsroom. Very exciting. <laughs> Battle of Flowers. <laughs> now, emergency crews will be on duty. City parks will be open, but City Hall and most municipal offices will be closed today. Now, here are some places and services that are closed today. SAFD Administrative Offices, San Antonio Municipal Court. CPS Energy offices, all Metro Health Clinics and offices, the Alamo Dome offices, and box office. This is just a little bit. We have a full list of what's closed and what is still open. Just head to ksat.com. And the message is, just go to Battle of the Flowers. That's, That's it. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Justin pretty much curtailed the weather just for Battle of Flowers. It's fantastic. Absolutely. Right now, your time is 5'11", and it's 66 degrees outside. All right. A lot of exciting tech coming up. Just ahead, we're going to show you a new feature that lets you connect your iPhone to your Windows PC. This is what we were talking about. Yes, that's that's very neat. And I hear you can even FaceTime with Androids now. Ooh. So, you know, we'll, we'll have to look into that. But taking a look across the city, we'll be getting with Justin Horn and he'll have the update on your forecast for Fiesta. We'll be back. Good morning and welcome back. So virtual reality becoming more and more prevalent in our everyday lives. And one of the top tier headsets, virtual reality headsets, it's soon going to be available for purchase at your local retailers. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has all the details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, PlayStation VR 2 is headed to retailers. Right now, the pricey headset is only available directly through Sony. Reports say it will be in stores sometime next month, but nothing is confirmed. Also, no word on where the headsets will be sold. Next, Microsoft's new Phone Link for iOS feature lets iPhone users connect their phones to Windows 11 PCs. The company says it provides basic iOS support for calls, messages, and access to contacts. All Windows 11 customers should have access to the feature by mid-May. And YouTube Music has officially rolled out podcasts on all of its platforms. Now users will be able to start listening on the main app, then continue on YouTube Music. The podcast will be available regardless of whether a listener has a YouTube premium subscription. I hear podcasts from piano players are flawless. They never commit a major error. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. That was a horrible joke. But we were well, talking about, you know, YouTube uh, music. You were saying it's like inevitable. Exactly, exactly. I figured it was going to roll out at some point. We had Pandora, or what is it, Pandora, mm -hmm. um, Spotify, and, you know, it was next. Now it is. Yes, All absolutely. Right. Time now, 516, 66 degrees. And just taking a look right now, there is an incident happening right now at Loop 410 at Broadway. So you want to keep a lookout when commuting this morning. We have Stephen Cavazos in the building and he'll be able to break it down when we come back. Meet the outdoorsies, Wayfair's outdoor deal experts. The gardener goes to Wayfair for gardening basics that aren't so basic. The entertainer, her place might look expensive. Don't let it fool you. And me, the lounger. I get just what I need with a tap on the Wayfair app. Get outdoors in for way less at Wayfair. Wayfair, you've got just what I need. Want luxury hair repair that doesn't cost $50? 
Pantene's Pro Vitamin Formula repairs hair as well as the leading luxury bonding treatment for softness and resilience without the price tag. If you know, you know it's Pantene. It's time for a new kind of diamond. The You're Always There For Me diamond. The You're My Inspiration diamond. The diamond that honors every side of her. Diamonds by Pandora. Exquisitely beautiful, lab-created diamonds. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Fiesta Friday. There's so much going on today. <laughs> oh, look, we're popping with all the colors. It's fantastic. Yes, it is. It's popping here on this. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is. <laughs> you know, it's great to, to work with the three of you guys today. Yeah. Justin, uh, great to see you again. I know we work together uh, well, <laughs> as well. Yeah, as well. great to see you again. But, uh, you know, better news in the traffic department here, guys. Thankfully, uh, we did actually have a crash that was reported earlier this morning. Looks like that's already in the clearing stages. I did speak to our friends over at TransGuide, and they do tell me that uh, we have a tow truck on the scene. So that's some progress. But uh, keep in mind, Katrina Weber was driving through the area and notice a second crash on the axis road. Not clear how long that's going to take to uh, wrap up, but watch out if you're driving through the area. We do have first responders who've been out there for a little while now, shutting down the main lanes. Folks are exiting Nacogdoches Road, but again, keep this in mind. We are in the clearing stages, so make sure to give those first responders plenty of room. As we get a look at the map, thankfully, uh, we're not seeing so many delays in the westbound lanes. It's going to be those eastbound lanes. Uh, lots of red that's already building out there, and it may stretch a little bit further as the morning commute does get going at 520. About a big look at the map, though, no other incidents to report as of yet, but we're going to keep a close eye on things as the commute does get rolling this morning. Our friends at TransGuide now uh, panning that camera around for a different shot, and you can see that uh, it looks a little bit like a scattered scene right now. We'll work to get some more details confirmed, but right now I would say it's just best to avoid the area, Justin. Thanks, Stephen. Have you seen any fog on any of the TransGuide cameras? No. Okay, there you go. Uh, we're watching for maybe a little bit of patchy fog building in this morning, but there you go. We haven't seen any so far. We'll see if we uh, get some here over the next couple of hours. 67 degrees at the airport, 66 Kelly, 68 Randolph. We've got a pretty light wind out of the south, but there is moisture starting to stream in here. Dew points have jumped up significantly now into the 60s. Here's a look at some of the uh, visibility as far as uh, some of the reports around the area. As we said, there's not much here in San Antonio, but as you get down to Pleasanton, certainly there is. We're also seeing some around Seguin, Gonzalez, Kennedy, Beville, and this moisture is working its way north and west. So that's why I think there is a possibility, at least, of some fog this morning, along with low clouds. Here's a look at our weather timeline. As we get to 9 o'clock, any sort of cloud cover and fog is going to go away. Temperatures will be in the upper 60s, and then we'll warm into the 70s and eventually close to 80 by noontime. So battle flowers, great. Uh, clear skies. Temperatures in the 70s. By 3 o'clock, we're close to 90 degrees. It's going to be hot and humid. That sets the stage as a front comes through for some strong storms this afternoon. And this is what we have to be careful with. It is a Friday evening, and a lot of people are going to be out and about. Be aware, between 6 and 9 o'clock, there is a decent threat for severe weather, hail and gusty winds being the main threats. Here's the setup. Humidity starting to surge in. Here's our front starting to move into the Texas Panhandle. That pushes east and southeast. Severe weather will line up along I-35. So Dallas-Fort Worth all the way down to San Antonio. That's where the highest risk for severe weather is today. That's where the Storm Prediction Center has outlined a risk for numerous severe storms. Uh, San Antonio, Tyler, Waco, Austin, again down to San Antonio. And the risk here locally includes much of the area, but even if you're not in the numerous category, the, on a scale of one to five, about a three, uh, the rest of the area is in the scattered category. So the risk is there for everybody. And here's a look at the forecast. As uh, we get to four o'clock, still probably sunny here in San Antonio, but we're starting to see isolated storms pop up in the whole country. And this happens quickly. Around five o'clock, you'll see these storms just kind of blow up. And by six o'clock, we've got a broken line of strong to severe storms that make their way through San Antonio. I'd say between six and nine, but we're kind of focusing in here on seven o'clock. 70% chance of these storms moving in. They'll start to push southeast at eight o'clock, and then by nine, 10 o'clock, they're racing towards the coast. These are going to be moving pretty quick, so that's one thing we do need to mention. We're not going to get a ton of rain out of this just because of the quick moving nature of this activity, but. Uh, that also means we could see some very strong winds and again hail is a real possibility too. By midnight the bulk of the rain moving out but we'll still see a few lingering showers into the pre dawn hours on Saturday before it clears out and then we get very gusty winds. Uh, storm timing again 6 to 9 o'clock here in San Antonio. If you're closer to the coast probably goes until about midnight. Storm threats, hail, gusty winds, 
big threats there with these storms flooding and tornado are low. Uh, but we'll be watching for uh, any of those severe storms and we'll certainly let you know. We do need to mention very quickly that winds will be a big issue Saturday morning gusts to 40 miles per hour. Those winds subside, so by Fiesta Flambeau we get good weather, albeit a little chilly. 66 at 9 o'clock by 11 p.m. tomorrow evening. We could be in the 50s. Uh, that's sort of a rarity for Fiesta Flambeau. 75 tomorrow and 84 Sunday. Back to humid and warm weather coming up next week, guys. Yes, thank you for that update, Justin. Right now your time is 524 and it's 66 degrees outside. we got a lot more to come here on GMSA. Up next, the Transformers rolling out to theaters once again. Plus, Jane Austen talking about martial arts in polite society. All right, from big, shiny robots to colorfully dressed wedding guests, it seems everyone on the big screen is doing battle. CNN's David Daniel looks at all the film fights in today's Hollywood Minute. This is not our war. Optimus, we must trust each other to protect the home we all share. How big can this guy be? Uh, he eats planets. So, like, way bigger than a planet. It's Autobots and Maximals against the big bad Unicron in the first full trailer for Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Anthony Ramos leads the humans caught in the interstellar robot war. Transformers Rise of the Beasts lands in theaters June 9th. We are going to show Luna who these people really are. Let's decimate this mother! A martial artist in training enlists her friends to stop her sister from getting married in polite society. Star Priya Kansara, who did stunt and fight training several times a week for the role, says there's a heart, or rather two hearts, underneath all the action. It's this beautiful love story between these sisters and how they really will go to the ends of the earth for one another. Did you see my kick? Of course I bodied it. It was magical. Polite Society opens in theaters this weekend. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Wow, very diverse. I love it. Love to see it on the screen. All right now, your time is 529 and it's 66 degrees. All right, economists worried about what will happen if an agreement on the debt ceiling is not reached by this summer, specifically June. Just ahead, why lawmakers and the president still not agreeing on how to fix the problem. How about yet another subscription service? Just uh, ahead, how much Mercedes EV owners will have to pay to make their cars go a little faster? All right, a lot of headlines this morning. We're talking debt ceiling. That deadline keeps getting closer and closer for President Joe Biden and House Speaker McCarthy. They're still at odds. This power struggle between Democrats and Republicans, and frankly, between Republicans and Republicans, could lead to the first default in a major advanced economy since the Great Depression and World War II. So up next, what happens next if an agreement on the debt ceiling is not reached by the summer? And you all have been waiting for it all week long. It's finally Fiesta Friday. This is the morning Ooh. of, but will it rain or will we have sunshine? Justin Horn is in the building to break down the forecast. Good morning. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us and battle of flowers later today. I want to give a oh, big yeah. shout out to Steve oh, Cavazos. Thank you. Just trying with to. The, yeah, look at this. This is a little really flower. See it. It's a little bit bright in here, so I think uh, I'll have to take a picture of it, maybe post it on the gram oh, a little yeah. later. But uh, Viva. Oh right. yeah, look at that. <laughs> hey, Viva. So, look at sharp, my friend. Thank Justin you. Horn. You guys look fantastic. I mean, you scared me a little bit in our morning conference mm -hmm. call where you were like, we could see severe weather later yeah, today. I, I, I don't want to scare anyone, but we do need to, we do need to let you know that uh, this evening, if you because uh, a lot of people are going to be out and about for Fiesta events, that there is a threat for severe weather. A pretty good threat, in fact. Uh, so just a heads up. Uh, and here's a look at the weather headlines. Brief fog and morning clouds today. We're already starting to see some of that. And I know the morning commutes, uh, as Stephen will tell you, will be probably a little bit lighter today. Kids are off school, most kids off school for uh, Battle of Flowers. Uh, but just know there will be some fog around. Uh, speaking of Battle of Flowers, a little more humidity, but nice, nice weather for that. A lot of people will be out there this morning. We'll be out there uh, to join you. Then, then it's this evening, severe storms likely between 6 and 9 p.m. here in San Antonio. That's the time frame we are watching. 67 right now, mostly cloudy. Clouds have rolled in and we do have a little bit of fog here and there. We'll see that through about 8 or 9 o'clock. And then skies will pretty much clear out. That's why Battle of Flowers looks great. Temperatures in the 70s, maybe close to 80 by the parade's end. 
And then as we head into the afternoon, close to 90 for high. So we're topping out at 89. But by 5 o'clock, we start to add in those rain chances. And here comes the threat for severe weather. Storm Pred Prediction Center, since we talked to you last uh, yesterday, has updated our area into a higher risk for severe weather. So on a scale of 1 to 5, about a 3. Hail, gusty winds, the main issues. And of course, we'll be with you through all of it. As the storms develop tonight, we'll probably be live on your uh, KSAT weather app as well. We're going to look at the latest forecast for you coming up here in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Stephen now. We have had a few issues despite yeah. the fact... You know, roads aren't that busy. There's some issues out there. Oh, right. Uh, you know, Justin, you said it best. We really aren't expecting a whole lot of folks out there for the morning rush commute because it is, uh, you know, a lot of kids may be off from school. We know a lot of offices are also closed today, but a big problem was reported here at 410 at Broadway. We actually had two crashes, one on the Axis Road and one that appeared to be on the main lane. So both have cleared out. So traffic's moving through the area without any trouble. So a lot much better news to report out over here. But we take you to the map and uh, no more red to detect there. Plenty of green that is moving its way through the eastbound lane. So uh, just watch out as you get the commute rolling this morning. We have had some problems. Uh, those have cleared out, so they're not going to impact the current drive time for you. But remember to drive, drive safe and anytime you see those flashing lights, be sure to move over or sm uh, slow down. Let's get a look here at the travel times. If you're heading into San Antonio for a battle of flowers and you want to maybe get an early start, it's still pretty pleasant from Pleasanton along I-37 northbound with 28 minutes to the downtown area. About 30 minutes. That's the usual drive time along US 90 eastbound. If you're heading in from Castroville and that arrival from Lionel should take you about 17 minutes along I-35 northbound. But again, better news here at 410 at Broadway. We started off our morning with a few bumps in the road. Those have cleared out, but we'll have an update on some closures you want to be aware of as the commute does get rolling. Alyssa. Thank you for that update, Stephen. San Antonio fire investigators have a bit of a mystery on their hands. They're trying to figure out how a fire started at a property where no one lived. Katrina Weber has that story live from downtown. Thank you for joining us, Katrina. We understand this also had an impact on neighbors. Well, good morning. Uh, it definitely had a lot of people awake at a, a time where they would have been sleeping. Now, the heat from the fire also caused damage to one neighbor's house and had that woman evacuated from her home. The fire, which broke out just before midnight on a street called Green Meadow, actually did not even start in a home. Firefighters believe something first sparked the flames inside a shed. Now, this is in a neighborhood near Jackson Keller and Blanco Road. The fire then spread to the home, which was vacant, and firefighters again say the heat from it also melted siding on the neighbor's home, but we understand that no one was hurt. Now, even though no one lived at the property where the fire started, firefighters say that that shed was crowded with items. They say they're also looking into the possibility that someone may have broken in and been staying on that property without permission. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, we've been following the U.S. debt ceiling drama extensively, and not to be flippant, but this could be a real serious blow to our nation's entire domestic economy and really have ripple impacts throughout the entire world economy. Absolutely. President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy having come to terms on how to raise the financial ceiling. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, unless that changes, some analysts say American living standards could be affected. The United States reached its $31.4 trillion spending limit on January 19th, and that's when the battle in the Beltway began. This power struggle between Democrats and Republicans, and frankly between Republicans and Republicans, could lead to the first default in a major advanced economy since the Great Depression and World War II. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's 320-page Limit, Save, and Grow Act, which passed through the House, raises the debt limit, but trims the budget. The polls are overwhelmingly showing that they, do, they want cuts in spending in order to raise the debt ceiling. We've done the responsible thing, uh, and the president and the Senate need to accept that. President Joe Biden and most Democratic lawmakers aren't interested. The discussion on the debt ceiling ought to be agree to raise the debt ceiling, period, end of story. And tell us about when you want to schedule discussions on the budget. They ought to be separate. 
If an agreement on the debt ceiling isn't reached by summer, officials say treasuries could tank, interest rates spike, the dollar sinks, and global economies reel. The banking system, particularly small and medium-sized banks, still have a lot of losses on their books simply because interest rates went up a lot. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the debt ceiling deadline could come as soon as June. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Staying in Capitol Hill, the Senate calling for a watchdog probe into the CIA's handling of sexual assault cases. So Virginia Democratic Senator Mark Warner and Vice Chair, Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio, they say they're concerned about the nature of the allegations and the CIA's response. And this comes as multiple female CIA employees said the agency is actually discouraging women from filing sexual misconduct complaints. A CIA spokesperson said they would not comment on this ongoing investigation. Russia has fired more than 20 cruise missiles and two drones at Kyiv and other parts of Ukraine. The attacks earlier today killed at least eight people. Air raid sirens sounded around the capital in the first attack against the city in nearly two months. The Kyiv city administration said Ukraine's air forces intercepted 11 cruise missiles and two unmanned aerial vehicles over the city. The six people were killed when a residential building was hit. All right, fewer adults are smoking cigarettes. The CDC surveyed 27,000 people 18 years or older with the National Health Interview Survey last year. About 11% of adults said they were current cigarette smokers. That's about 1.5% fewer adults than what we saw in 2020 and 2021. It is a significant drop from when the survey started. Cigarette smoking is still the leading cause of preventable deaths and disabilities across our country. According to the CDC, more than 10 times as many Americans have died prematurely from smoking than have died in all the wars fought by the United States. Absolute jams. And the food looks amazing. Oh, yeah. San Antonio coming out strong to party for the 75th anniversary of Nyosa. Absolutely. I mean, look at them. Look at them dancing there. Very beautiful. Chicken on a steak. That's what looks delicious. So the, hungry right now. <laughs> the Fiesta Favorite event raises money for the Conservation Society, and it has been packed with festival goers. If you haven't checked it out yet, don't worry. There's still another night for you to experience all the fun, just like them on the screen. Just go to ksat.com for a list of changes happening this year and what you need to know before you go. Of course, and the Battle Flowers Parade kicks off this morning. You can join Ooh. our watch party along the parade route. Our live coverage starts at 6 a.m. sharp. That is just in about 18 minutes, more or less. Scan the QR code to buy tickets. It's right here on your screen. You have time to pull out your phone and it comes to the tickets. Listen, listen to this, you guys. It comes with tacos, assigned seating, and a bathroom plus so so no excuse right you you guys can come and hang out with us come and be with the ksat crew we are looking forward to seeing you out there i mean the tacos themselves right exactly pays for it right there <laughs> absolutely right now your time is a 5 42 and it's 66 degrees outside so many of us have subscriptions whether it's netflix or disney plus what's your uh, go-to streaming service netflix okay that makes sense. all right but how about one that Get your car to go faster. Mm. Oh, well, up next, we're going to tell you how much you'd have to pay per month if you want your Mercedes EV. If you have a Mercedes EV electric vehicle, <laughs> probably not worried about that additional cost, but you can pay more to have more horsepower. Up next, why 2023 has been good for Amazon, just not for its thousands of workers. Oh, yeah, they just reported earnings after the bell yesterday. Well, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Looks calm and quiet right there. I'm going to be honest, there's a lot more people on the roadways than I expected at 543 on a beautiful Fiesta <laughs> Friday. We're going to check in with Steven and Justin in just a bit. The countdown to one of San Antonio's largest day parades is on. The 2023 Battle of Flowers Parade happens to be 
one of my favorites. I'm Priscilla Caraman, and I'm going to show you what my parade must-haves are. First up, the sun's probably going to be out, so you'll want to grab your favorite shade. Sunscreen. It's supposed to be a little humid, so a fan. That humidity will probably have you sweating, so a hair clip. Deodorant. Hand sanitizer. charger because you're probably going to be taking lots of pictures and most importantly plenty of water so that you can stay hydrated don't forget your cascarones Wow, that was beautiful. I love it. Just the vibrancy, the colors, all of it. And your morning consumer headlines, the start of 2023 has been good for our online retailer Amazon, but not as good for thousands of its workers. The e-commerce giant reported a profit of $3.2 billion in its first quarter. That's a huge jump from the losses it took a year ago. However, the news comes as Amazon lays off thousands of workers as it ramps up cost-cutting measures. All right, you can put pedal to the metal, the new Mercedes-Benz electric vehicle, but it is going to cost you. So the Mercedes EV and the owners in the United States, here's the thing, you can pay $60 a month extra for an additional 60 horsepower. And when I said $60, that's actually <laughs> not even it. With inflation, it's going to run you $90 a month to increase it by 80 horsepower. Mercedes isn't the only car maker offering extra features with a subscription fee. BMW has heated seats as a downloadable option, and Tesla has additional driving assistance features through software download. So we're at this weird inflection point where you can download things to your car, and instead of like an app, it actually makes the car faster, warmer, more horsepower, it's weird. Right, and, and my thing is, you know, um, you pay for the extra speed, but we have speed limits. So maybe right. if you're in the Autobahn in Germany, I okay, mean, where else really can you good use point. it? You know what I mean? So it's interesting. Yeah, you know, don't interesting. be racing on I-10. Right, <laughs> exactly. Right now your time is 548 and it's 66 degrees outside. All right, speaking of I-10, let's take a live look out at the roadways. A lot of people out and about today, and we already had some situations arise. We're gonna check in with Stephen Cavazos in just a few moments. All right, Viva Fiesta. Let's get a look at your commute. If you are heading to Battle of the Flowers a little bit early this morning, you may want to watch out. 37 at Salado Creek. Looks like there's a bit of fog there that Justin may have been mentioning. But 410 at Perrin Bidal, not a bad shot. We did have some issues out there on the road earlier this morning. Those have cleared out. So really not concerned with a lot of the commute from what I'm seeing on TransGuide. But Justin, seeing a little bit of fog in our area as well. Not a surprise, Stephen. We've got moisture moving back in. We've got a pretty good setup for fog this morning with dew points jumping up. We got the temperature at 67, dew point at 64, and a pretty light wind. Uh, we can kind of see some lower visibility. It looks like they're off in the distance on that camp, so I wouldn't be surprised if some of that spreads in over San Antonio. Dew points have jumped up into the 60s. It's almost sticky out there. We are definitely in the muggy territory now. So. Battle of Flowers weather looks good, but I will warn you, it will be a little bit humid, as Priscilla mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, visibility starting to come down, so we're seeing that around Randolph, New Braunfels, Seguin, both dealing with fog now. If you're headed up I-35, know that you'll run into that. And then as you head south down I-37, a lot of fog between Pleasanton and down towards Corpus Christi. So uh, fog, again, possible this morning. I think it probably lasts through about mid-morning and then it goes away and we'll get sunny skies for Battle of Flowers. 68 degrees when the parade gets started, 80 by noontime. So we'll be right in the 70s for most of the parade. Looks good. Uh, but as we head into this evening, things change pretty rapidly. Between six and nine o'clock, severe weather, a possibility storms, a good bet. 70% chance of rain between six and nine o'clock. Really, that's kind of the time frame that we're watching. And here's why we've got humidity pouring in, as we said, but cold front starting to slide south. Right now it's in the Texas Panhandle by this afternoon. It quickly moves right along the I-35 corridor. You'll see storms blowing up around DFW around 4 o'clock, but we'll also start to see some isolated weather further south along this front. And then very quickly, storms will develop along that front. Storm Prediction Center has upgraded our area to a risk for numerous severe storms this afternoon. So on a scale of 1 to 5, a 3. That's an elevated risk for us. And this stretches up and down the I-35 corridor. So a little closer look here locally. Much of the hill country, San Antonio, within that higher risk and then a scattered risk for everyone else. So severe weather possible no matter where you are across South Texas today. Here's a look at the forecast. We've got sunny skies noontime through about 4 o'clock. 
then we start to watch for that isolated activity developing. Five o'clock just kind of starts to explode really along that front. And then you'll see a broken line of severe storms by 6 p.m. Makes its way towards San Antonio. Again, six to nine, that's kind of the time frame we're watching. This model shows right around seven o'clock storms working through the city of San Antonio. 70% chance here, and it's along this line where we could see some severe storms. By eight, nine o'clock, this is pushing south and the storms race towards the coast and behind it, we'll just get some lingering showers through pre-dawn tomorrow and then very quickly skies clear. We've got sunny skies for most of Saturday with some gusty winds behind the system. The main risk with the severe weather today, hail and gusty winds. That's what we'll be watching very, very closely. Should also mention we'll get some gusty winds early Saturday morning, gust to 40 miles per hour possible. Flambeau looks good. It'll be a little bit chilly. Uh, by the time the parade uh, gets to an end there. 75 tomorrow, 84 on Sunday. More humidity, more clouds next week. Of course, we'll keep you posted on any severe weather this evening. We'll be right back. Good morning. In a news cycle that seems to always have breaking news in the morning, we have more breaking news overnight right here on GMA. Three American soldiers killed and a fourth injured after two U.S. Army helicopters collided in Alaska. Our Martha Rydetz is tracking the latest and has all the details. Plus, this morning, I'll be tracking that wild weather happening all across the country as the Mississippi River swells to levels that we have not seen in decades. At least seven reported tornadoes from that Florida Georgia line area. And so we've got to show you all the damage there. The East Coast is ready for a washout of a weekend. That's all right here on GMA. All right, back here at home. Battle Flowers coverage starts right after the break on GMSA. Mark and Steph are standing by live. We're going to check in with them. And if you are headed out there, we're going to be checking in on the roadways. Steven is in through the morning. He's going to have what you need to know before you head out the door.